We're going to cover two questions today and show you some pieces, and then we're going to do a spray session. Good morning, everybody. Jen Crevasi, Jekyll Bates. It's the start of a brand new week. Uh, we are steps and steps closer to the springtime and the pre-spawn, and I'm really excited about this time of year. I always get really excited about this time of year. From now until spring are usually when I catch the biggest fish I get all year, usually. Uh, hopefully it won't disappoint this year. But I want to answer a couple of questions and do a quick update before we get into the spray session. Today's spray session is going to be concentrated on small waters. Um, I think there was a misinterpretation of my last update where I said that I was going to add a small waters section to my website and it probably sounded like small waters session. But hey, it's a great idea and somebody commented that they're excited about that, so let's do one. So we're going to knock this into two parts, uh, the first part being over here at the finishing desk. And we're going to answer a couple of questions. And a lot of time I hear over and over again, you're painting to catch the fishermen, not the fish. And while that may be partially true, um, we're all about transparency on the channel. There's a lot of really amazing artists out there that are doing exactly what I do a little bit differently. They add their own flavor to it. They add their own style. They're creating. And part of what we do as custom bait makers is trying to give you guys a product that nobody else has given you guys. And the fish, because the fish do see what's in the water. And the more realistic you can look or the more wild and crazy in stained waters or just something different, there is going to be an effect on the fish as well. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And I've, I've done this before too, but this is a really cool pattern and it's fun. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort to do. We can, if you guys really want to see this in a spray session, I can certainly do it. It's just a stencil or actually it's more ribbon than stencil, but I've seen some other people use some stuff similar to this. Um, and it's really cool and it's great for this time of year because we're in January now and red is a trigger color from late winter into the spawn. But what happens is that the fish are going to view this differently at different depths. They're going to view it differently in different water conditions and they're going to view it differently in different lighting conditions. Obviously the, the deeper you get, the darker it gets and the more filtered the water or the less, I'm sorry, the less filtered the water becomes. But when you have a bright day, you can already see as I'm moving the camera towards the light, you can see what happens is that the rest of that pattern just fades away. But what's left is that really, really cool stenciling pattern that looks like the inside workings of a fish. So there is a method to the madness when you guys are saying, oh, that, you know, that doesn't look like a fish I've ever seen. No, but when you get it, up here that's the sweet spot because it's a transparent paint that I'm using on this particular one and then for cloudier days I've got some gold glitter on this but that's just an example of how differently something can look to a fish than it does to the human eye because we see it nine times out of ten even if we're tank testing it we see it as an external object we're not seeing it the way a fish would see it in the water a fish's eye is much more laser focused on their prey and on things in the water they rely heavily on sound as well so it's just something to keep in mind something to keep your your eyes and ears open for and to open your mind to and that's my little my little rant on different patterns that you're going to see out there and there's some really cool ones i'm not just certainly talking about myself there's a lot of really good custom artists out there so i want you guys to not count out custom artists for their work uh, especially the builders so we've got a few patterns this is a northern gill these are going out this morning so i need to hustle up and get through the rest of this and we're also since we're talking about lipless in this as well the other question that I get asked all the time, like literally at least once a day, somebody's going to ask, how do you hang a lip list to, to dry it? The people that are just starting to get into painting. And this is my answer. I kept this one. Um, I, I didn't pull the wiring off of this just yet, but I want you to take a look at how this is done. I've got two drip wires to hang. I've got my bars like this 
and I have a drip wire in the tail. Now you'll notice some of them, depending on what blank or what lure you're repainting, if it's a brand name, some of them have positioning where the tail eye hook is further up the body. That's gonna be similar to a wiggle wart where they're just a pain in the butt all the way around, but you can get away with a lot of stuff. It's just, you have to be mindful. Uh, when you put that tail drip wire in for the liquid and epoxy or whatever it is that you guys are using, if you're hanging and dipping, you're probably using KBS or Alumilite, some sort of UV stuff. Um, but you can see that this really alleviates, there's not a whole lot, if any, buildup on this particular bait. Even if I move this away, it, it really does the job well. But since I have a wire over here, I'm going to show you what that looks like when it hangs. And there you have it. So that is absolutely the way you guys should be hanging a lip list. Now, again, some of them are a little trickier as far as where the placement is. So then you just kind of play around with different lengths on these. But for the most part, this is how I hang them. Um, there's a few styles that I deal with, uh, or if I'm doing repaints like this Damiki, uh, where they're a little bit more offset. You can see on this one if I can pull that off without wrecking the entire. Yeah, that's not going to happen because it's Monday. So, of course, things are going to get tangled up. Come on, get off of there. Get. Nope. Come on, Jen. Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn? Why is this not coming off? All right, edit point, maybe. It, I, I think I'm making it worse. What in the world? Come on, Jen. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! You can see that this is more offset where your your belly hook is positioned forward almost right underneath the eye. So then you just have to deal with different lengths. But that is how you do it. Um, hang it from the top, drip down to the tail, and then hang an eyelet. Hang it just like I showed you. And you will vastly improve your drip time and you won't have build up etc etc so that's the two questions that we're going to get answered and now we're just going to blow through what i've got going out the door this morning this is a natural crappie pattern in breeding mode it's a black crappie on that little hundred floating and these are pretty decent um they've got some reflective properties on the internal workings of these things not a foil um they just they just have some reflectivity uh, in, in there and it's very similar and I'm going to use a term that I haven't used before because it makes sense uh, when you're dealing with replicas a lot of people call them knockoffs you can call them whatever you want but basically these were built from a parent bait so in this case it would be the Rapala Husky Jerk um, in other cases it's different baits obviously the square bill everybody does it um, these usually you won't unless somebody's cheating real hard, which hopefully they're not, um, you won't find this unless a patent has expired or a patent is an exclusive rights privilege. So there's a lot of conflict out there. I'm not going to get into it. Everybody does it. And I think we're at the point where nobody really cares anymore. Um, I, I know that there are some that do, and I certainly do with the stuff like I, I don't want to buy brand names and then buy these I would never sell this as a husky jerk because it's not but it's parent baits were so if that makes any sense did I clear anything up probably not moving on this is a powder 2.5 rattling square bill and yeah we're still testing that KBS that I was sent Now one thing I will notice on this one, there's a little bit of bubble buildup. It's not going to affect swimability or anything like that, but I had some excess that I should have blotted out when I put my, um, that stuff, when I put the super glue on the eyes, because I like to super glue all my eyes down. And there was just a little bit on the outside, um, probably had not dried completely when I dunked it, so that's what you're seeing there. It's not that the product is inferior, it's that there was a chemical reaction between the super glue and the clear coat. This is a toxic crappie, a little fluorescent version of a crappie pattern on that Dinger S pressing. Downward eyes. Got some fluorescent red, some fluorescent yellow, that really cool moss green to kind of offset the yellow, almost like a breeding color as well. I've also got a Walking Dead. These are all website requests. You can get all this stuff on the website. 
There's a link at the end of the video, and there's links in the description. And it's over at www.jekyllbaits.com. You know, I get, I get sick of saying that because I feel like I'm selling myself, but that's kind of how I feed my family, so I have to. Because this is all I do. This is a gold vein. This was a 2019 pattern. I'm getting ready to blow through some 2020s. We're going to make some additions. I'm going to make some tweaks and adjustments to the website, so that's coming as well. But this is just a, a copper gold pearl paint and then some reds and deep reds and um, magenta blacks over top of that some pretty cool eyes this is the stag horn I haven't done any of these and gosh it's probably I think the last order I got prior was seven months ago so it seems to be a seasonal people like this in certain times of the year spring bait a little hint of blue and instead of black veins we've got white veins I've got brown veins on this crackle shad and again you can find all this cool stuff online on the website and I think we've gone and the northern gill I think I started out with this ah, if I did I apologize but this is just a whole lot of golds and browns and just a little hint of everything else. But it's the layered where you shoot down the side of the, the mesh and not straight at it. And you can get some really cool stuff. Hey, if you guys want to see anything specific coming up in February, let me know. I'm making a list of additions to add into my spray sessions. I have done stuff like this in the past, but I know a lot of you guys might be new to the channel and you don't feel like digging back two and three years and the really crusty, cringy beginnings of the spray session when the lighting wasn't good. So if you guys want me to revisit anything, by all means, I would be more than happy to do it. And with that said, without further ado, let's jump into a small waters spray session. So we are into the second part of this twofer. I filmed the first part yesterday, Monday. So I had a bunch of stuff going out. And today, we're gonna repaint this tiny little Rapala Husky Jerk because we're gonna focus on small waters. And it's something that I don't do a whole lot of on this channel, but it's something that I really like small waters. Um, growing up in Harford County, Maryland, Deer Creek, uh, obviously the Susquehanna is big water, but Deer Creek that feeds it had a lot of little nooks and crannies, and it had some deep spots, and they, they stocked the heck out of it with trout, um, but it's a warm creek, so once those trout get fished out, they, they, they don't, there's no holdovers, basically, like uh, some of the colder water in the uh, western Maryland areas. So right now I'm just taking the split rings and the hooks off and before you guys ask, these are basic, basic, basic split ring pliers. These are from Bass Pro. I'm going to show you what the box looks like. Actually it's a bubble package. Bring it back into the light. That is it. Carbon steel multi-purpose split plane. Split plane. Yeah. How about English? carbon steel multi-purpose split ring pliers. What I like about them, uh, they're like eight bucks. They're very inexpensive. What I like about them is that this part protrudes past where the ring splitter is. I was about to say that they don't do a whole lot with their eyes. Hey look, it's an actual side of the garage that you guys have not seen, aka shop, studio. We'll light that up a little bit later. I've been getting rid of my it's just supply boxes so throughout the year this stuff builds up and I, I dump it like six months into the year and there's just a lot so that'll get recycled all right yeah I was about to say that they don't do a whole lot with super gluing their eyes down 
but I stand corrected these were glued in I don't know if it's super glue because it's fairly easy to pull these out and it looks like these are size 6 and when I say 6 it's a 6 millimeter eye that'll fit into these sockets this is a this is a standard little rainbow trout pattern but it's not what I want to do with this bait today I want to make it simple and make it to where this could be used in anybody's water because not every creek has trout get that taped there use the knife to get right up on that all right and we're just going to go start to finish on this one this morning you can see where the paint stops right here so we'll bring that tape all the way to the paint line And usually when you do that, then you can just kind of fold these little tape sides from the back over to the front. And then you have a pretty good seal on your bill. So I was looking, and I've kind of got it narrowed down between two. This is a log perch, which is a very common species that's found in most streams and creeks, warm and cold water. And the other one that I really like is a central stone roller. They're coast to coast pretty much. And it's a fairly simple pattern. Let's go with the log perch. First thing that we need to do, just like with any bait that we're repainting, give it a dose of white primer. I sometimes make my own. Right now, this is just a straight bottle of Createx Opaque White. I know a lot of you guys say that it's too thick. Uh, you can reduce it a little bit, but you don't want to reduce it too much. Try turning the pressure up in your airbrush, or you can do what Nate Marling says to do, just get in a wad of HP. CS Eclipse. You know. Although, I'm not going to tell you to give up. I watched that video the other day. I was like rolling. That thing is hilarious. And it's not intended to, obviously, it's not intended to teach you. Nate's one of the best in the game. And he's been doing it a very long time. And I watch his stuff religiously. Just, I'm a YouTube junkie just like you guys. I like watching them all. Um, he's really, really good at building. And he's gotten snarkier and funnier the, the more he gets into it. And uh, I totally get that. So keep going, Nate. Now we're ready. I know you guys already know how to put on white primer. You guys ask me all the time what I use. A lot of times I make up my own combination. Today it's just straight opaque Createx white. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do just to add a little bit of, I don't know, coolness, natural, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you're going to see what I'm going to do here in just a second. I'm going to add some pearl white into the mix. And the reason I'm going to do that over the white is because it kind of gives that natural pearl scale effect to it, not putting scales on it, but the shimmer that scales have. And anything that you can get as an advantage or an edge that the fish might see a little better is a bonus. Now you can see in the background um, and up in your corner here on the right hand side, this is what we're doing today. This is the long perch log perch. It's a log perch. Let's talk about the log perch. It's the largest member of the darter family and it's indigenous and endemic to North American waters. It's in sm small streams and creeks and it's a cute little booger. It is pretty easy. The hardest thing that we're going to do is going to be putting the scales in and today we're going to be working with pressure. I'm not going to stencil this. We're going to freehand these lines in and see how good or horrible we do. Um, it's practice makes perfect so just play along with me on that. We'll get it as close as we can get it. But the color pattern is fairly easy. We're looking at a traditional black 
looks like some bone or sand in here and that's pretty much it maybe just a little bit of pale indigo on the belly maybe some black magenta around the eyes and the face I had mentioned in one of my updates though one of the more recent updates that I was adding a small water section to the website um, more geared toward panfish and stuff like crappie and trout stuff that the, the bassers will certainly like too and you know just because it's a smaller bait does not mean that bass won't hit it but if you're a creek junkie like I am I grew up on the creeks grew up on Deer Creek in Maryland like I said a little bit earlier um, these things are no-brainers I should I should have been doing these for the last three years so I am adding and I'll pull the color back out I'm adding bone sand and the color on the bottle says Createx sand um, I've <laughs> Tackle Warehouse must be here. Excuse me a minute, folks. I was right. It's Tackle Warehouse. I knew it. Well, UPS. Delivering Tackle Warehouse. Yet. Oh, what good things do we have in here? Good and the sprows this is all repaints for customers and the sticker every time you order more than 50 bucks from tackle warehouse they give you a sticker i don't know if that's good or bad just add it to the pile i have got my pressure down around 10 12 somewhere in there pretty much all i'm doing is i'm making sure that i have enough pressure to push air out but I want to make really thin light lines and I am noticing that it's splattering a little bit okay we want to hit the stencil and not We want to hit the stencil here and not the, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, that. We made our, I'm kind of using Wicked Black Magenta as our pencil. You know how like when you, you guys are building something or kind of use a pencil to mark out everything. Well, that's how we're treating this Wicked Black Magenta. It's an excellent detailer. all right there are a lot of lines now we're going to do the big lines first and then kind of work in between that and the best way i know to gauge everything so that we hit equal on both sides of this bait is to work with a little sharpie one of the reasons i put the gill plates on there was to kind of give me an idea of how far back i need to put my first dot And we may not put exactly the same number. We'll put a lot of them. So I've got four, I've got nine. So we're gonna do nine lines down the side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a dot on the back. So I think we can work that. I think I hit that right. And now all we need to do is the one side first we'll do that with black and then we'll put it down the other side and we're just doing the, the big lines on this bait first make sure we have good flow we do I'll bring that down okay It looks like there's 
So what it looks like it does, I'm going to show you here, is that the line does that and then it makes a little dot towards the bottom. So this is an excellent one to freehand and try. It doesn't seem like you can really screw it up. You just want to try and make sure that you're hitting your marks on the back of this. And a dot on the back. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I probably will use a stencil to cover those sharpie dots on the top. I normally do that. You hear that whistle? That's when you want to just make sure you're blowing out. You can actually turn that up a little just to push that because a lot of times little tiny particles will get trapped in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and do those in between lines. And while this is not the most scientific, it is a fun little bait and I promise you this thing is going to catch fish. Now I've given this a quick heat set off camera. The next thing I'm going to do is just run a little random stencil on the face because this has got a lot of black on the gill plate area. and then just add just a few pieces into this on both sides. And there we've got it. I'm going to add some eyes to this. I'm going to add a little bit of flush orange to this throat. Looks like a log perch. And just a little bit on the nose. We don't want a whole lot here. I gave that a quick heat set. The last thing I'm going to do is add just a little bit, that might be too much, of this Comart pearlescent. Coming back over here to the finishing desk, I pretty much think we've got the pattern down. We just need to figure out the eyes. I believe the eyes on this thing are silver. Don't know if this is going to give me a better shot of it. I don't know if you guys can see this at all, but yeah, it's silver eyes. So just basic, plain old, ordinary silver. I ho silver. No problems there. I think I have just the eye to do it. I think these are sixth sense eyes. Well, at least that's under the sixth sense name. You can order those through Tackle Warehouse.
or a number of places overseas. There we go. Just a drop. That's all you need. Set that in. Other side. are in. Well folks, I think we have a match here, at least as close as I want to get to it. Doing freehand on a smaller bait. This appears to be a little bit longer, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. For a first attempt, freehand, a little bit of accenting with an artist paintbrush. That's a double zero, in case you guys are wondering. Get that nice and happy. Dunk that all the way in. And there we have it. Let that drip off just for a second. Add our drip wire. And let's let it hang. I'll show you, as always, what it looks like after it's dry. Folks, I hope I was able to teach you guys a couple of things today. I always have fun when you guys hang out with me here in the shop. I'm excited about the shop for 2020 because lots and lots of good things are going to happen. Uh, starting with getting rid of the monstrosity of boxes over there from the last six months of supplies. I'm stoked about that corner. I think we could probably put together some vlog sessions over there. We'll see. Maybe some collabs this year. Who knows? You guys take care. I'll talk to you guys on the next video. As always, cheers and happy casting.